Hi, it's Chester Tuckwell at Blue Peak and Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at the new let function in a very specific scenario. I actually picked this tip up from the Excel is Fun uh, YouTube channel. It's an excellent YouTube channel if you want to get to know more about Excel. I'm going to slightly rehash what happened there and kind of pull it apart in the way that I can absorb it really well. So hopefully it might kind of help you as well. And the point of this is to show you how you can kind of replace a basic pivot table with a formula that only exists in one cell. So here's my scenario. I've got a small little table here that I want to create a pivot table for. So I'm just going to go through the process of creating the pivot table, and then I'm going to show you how to recreate that exact same report using a formula in a single cell that creates the whole report. So the first thing I would do if I was creating a pivot table is I'd always convert my data into an Excel table. And that's very easy to do. All you do is click in the data, Control T, you get this dialog box that pops up. Whereas the data for your table, my data has headers, my data, so I keep it ticked. Click on OK, and it's a table. So then what you do is you go to your table design tab that automatically appears when you're in a table. Go to the table name box, and we are going to call this score sheet. No spaces allowed in a table name. So I've got my table and I'll just create the pivot table. So I'll go insert pivot table and I'll put it on this sheet. And what I want to do is I want to have player in rows, score in values, and I'm going to have player in values as well. I'll call this total score. And I'll call this Games Played. Now, one of the things with a pivot table is that if I add someone else, if I add Fiona, she scored 1099. As you probably know, <laughs> pivot tables need to be refreshed. So I've got to do that every time. Now, if I use formulas, one of the advantages of using formulas is that your data should, or your calculations should automatically update. So that's why we're looking to see formulas as possibly an improvement on using pivot tables. So yes, we're going to use the let function. Now, this let function is available in Office 365, and I think it actually might only be available to the Office Insiders program which you can easily sign up to. But it's a good preview of what's coming to Excel, uh, even if you don't have it. So anyway, this is my pivot table version of the calculation. And I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Now, what I want to do is kind of take apart the calculation that we're going to do. Essentially, eventually, we're going to have it in one cell, this calculation. It's going to exist in one cell, but I'm going to create multiple calculations to kind of break it apart for you, and then we'll kind of join it all together. So the first thing we need to do to create this report is get a list uh, of the unique player names that we've got in column A, and we can use the unique function for that. So I'm going to refer to the score sheet table open square bracket, and I'm extracting the unique values from the player field. So if I press enter, there are my unique names. Now, next thing is to add up the scores that I've got in column B. I'm going to use the SUMIF function to do that. And the range is obviously where I'm applying my criteria. So That'll be this column here. So I can say score sheet, open square bracket, player. 
and the criteria is basically this list here. Now, the way I would refer to that spilled range from the unique function is I just go e2 hash, and then if it grows, then it will always incorporate new names. Comma sum range will be score sheets score. So if I press enter, I then get a sum of everybody's scores. Then I want to do a count of how many times each player has played. So I can use count if for that. So score sheet again. And I'm going to say uh, player, counting in the player column. And my criteria for that is again E2, and I can just say hash. So that would give me a count of how many times each player has played. I've ended up with three columns, which basically constitute the report that I want to create. So I need a formula that's going to join those three columns together. And to do that, I can use choose, which you may or may not have come across before. And the first argument is index number. Now, to join those three columns together, Basically, what you can do is just say one, two, three in uh, brace brackets. I've got three columns that I want to join together. So that's why I said one, two, three. If you had more, you'd put four, five, six, etc. And then the second argument is value one. So I would say E2 hash. Then value two would be G2 hash. And value three would be, sorry, value three would be I hash, I2 hash. So if I press enter, now I get that table as a single table. And it'll still work if I add uh, another player, Sasha scored uh, 800 all of these update for me. So that's the kind of report that I want to create, uh, but I need to kind of make that all happen within one cell in one formula. Now, just to aid your understanding, I'm just going to name these columns. So we'll call this player name. Then we'll call this um, total score. You'll see why I'm naming them in a moment. We'll call this games played. And we'll call this make report. Okay, so I am gonna create my little report down here. So it's gonna be a player name. Then it's gonna be total score. And then it's going to be games played. Do a little bit of formatting, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I my job here, my task here is to create a single cell formula that populates this report with all this data. Okay, so this is where we use the let function. So the first argument is name one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say player name. So I'm gonna try and recreate this here within this second argument. So I, I've named the first kind of like storage area, called it player name. And now I've got to say what calculation I want in that storage area. So it's essentially this formula. So I could say unique. And my array is score sheet. And it will be player. Close bracket. Comma. So now I'm on to the third argument in the let function, which is calculation or name two. 
Now, at this stage, I'm still defining these little storage areas, the first of which is player name, the second of which is going to be total score. Comma. And now I need to tell it what calculation I'm going to store within the total score name that I've created there. So that's going to be the calculation that I used here to sum up the scores. So I would say uh, sum if the range is in the score sheet and I'm looking in the player column and the names, the unique names are returned by the player name storage area that I created over here, which returns these unique names comma, and then I'm going to sum up the corresponding values in the score column. So it'll be score sheets, score column. Hopefully you're getting this. Okay. So I've got the player name calculation and I've got the total score calculation, comma. So the next name I'm going to play corresponds to games played games played and the calculation for that is just to count how many times the player name player's name appears in that column so for that i can use count if and i'm saying in the score sheet table in the player column i want to count using the unique names returned by the player name calculation or formula that's stored within that name. So I can close that bracket, comma. Right, so I've got one more calculation that I need to store, which I'm gonna call make report, comma. And now I've got to state the values that I want to store or the calculation that I want to store within that name. So this is where I use the choose table or the choose formula. And if you remember, what I did is in brace brackets, I wrote one comma two comma three. And then I specify value one. So value one is going to be a player name. Comma. Value two is going to be total score. Value three is going to be games played. Okay, comma. So now I can define the calculation or the output that the let function is going to give me. So basically that's make report. Close the bracket. And if I press enter, it returns the report for me. One formula that does the whole report. And again, let's add someone else. Let's add Paul 900. And there we are, it's automatically added to the report rather than having to refresh it in something like a pivot table. Okay, so a little introduction for you to the let function. Hopefully you found that interesting. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. So until the next one, goodbye for now.